After experiencing the iPhone 13 mini and the joy a small phone can bring, I was really intrigued by what this year's iPhone SE would bring. After all, another small phone can only be a good thing, right? But this budget-friendly rendition is a different beast altogether. In a nutshell, it is identical to the iPhone SE of 2020 and the iPhone 8, but with the saving grace of an A15 Bionic chip. So you're getting the same 4.7-inch display, a single 12-megapixel camera, and you'll probably be carrying around your charger or your power bank like it's 2017 all over again. So who is this phone actually for? The iPhone SE is not for everyone, but it is for someone. Maybe those looking to jump from Android to Apple without the heavy price tag, or for someone who wants a cheaper small phone from Apple without the bells and whistles, like for older folks and young kids. Or if you're looking to upgrade from an older SE or anything older than an iPhone 8. The iPhone SE 2022 is in practically the same body as the second generation iPhone SE back in 2020 and the iPhone 8 before that. So this is either going to feel familiar or feel dated. Handling this without a case can get pretty slippery versus the more grip-friendly flat-edge design of the iPhone 13 series. So get a case on this ASAP. Let's leave the dropping and smashing your iPhone trope in the past. It's lightweight, weighing in at 144 grams, coming in the standard colors of Midnight, Starlight, and Product Red. We have the aluminum body with a glass panel at the back, and at 7.3 millimeters thin, it is one of the thinnest phones in the market now in 2022. The thinnest iPhone was the iPhone 6 at 6.9mm. It tends to be the more tech you squeeze in, the thicker it gets. So that gives you a bit of an indication already of how much more went into this. You get your home button. Yes, a home button. So if you're coming from an iPhone 8 and earlier or the second generation SE, you'll feel right at home. And thanks to this home button, you also get Touch ID again, apart from the usual passcode. Touch ID was something that Apple ditched in newer iPhones since the iPhone X, but it reappeared Appears again in 2020 and 2022 in the iPhone SE. You can unlock with your fingerprint, however, this is only on the home button and not the in-display fingerprint sensors like many of the other phones in the market. Touch ID is responsive and reliable as always. But we're already in an age where you can unlock with Face ID even with your face mask on. And the iPhone SE does not come with Face ID, full stop. This might be a little deal breaker for some of you, especially when some of us are really into the convenience of Face ID. The iPhone SE does come with 5G, Bluetooth 5.0 and no headphone jack. For the display, they have retained the 4.7-inch LCD display and unfortunately, the size of the bezels and the chin too is the first thing you would probably notice, a stark reminder of how far we've come with phones maximizing screen real estate. Your experience may vary, but we put it in the hands of an Android user with a small phone and after a while, the black borders melted away and became a lot less noticeable. Humans really are adaptable to our tech. Sure, it won't be your first choice for watching Netflix, but playing games like Asphalt 9 with the bezels on also meant a more natural resting position for your thumbs. The stereo speakers were sufficiently crisp and immersive and matches up quite nicely when we compare it to the experience on the iPhone 13 mini. The LCD display's peak brightness is advertised at 625 nits and it fares well enough in bright sunlight. Typical to base iPhones, the display comes with a standard 60Hz refresh rate. Yes, 60Hz may not be top of the line, with other mid-range phones and even some entry-level phones on the market regularly bringing in at least 90Hz, and the 13 Pro and Pro Max already leapfrogging to an adaptive 120Hz. But remember, the 13 mini is also on a 60Hz refresh rate, and in our eyes, scrolling through on what is already a smaller screen, we can see how it wouldn't be a priority. The big saving grace of the iPhone SE is that it runs on the new, faster A15 Bionic chip with 4 gigs of RAM and storage options of 64 gigs, 128 gigs, and 256 gigs. You will be getting market-leading performance in terms of processing power with the A15 Bionic chip, the same chip powering the iPhone 13 series. Our Geekbench tests yield a single core score of 1,744 and a multi-core score of 4,676, so just as fast as even the iPhone 13 Pro Max. For comparison, our Galaxy S22 Ultra review with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor scored 1,214 for single core and 3,245 for multi-core. You are truly getting flagship performance. Longevity is the name of the game and Apple future-proofs the SE for years to come with software upgrades. We just wish it had more to power. 
The 64 gig storage option showing up here does make sense to keep prices as affordable as possible, although budget-friendly users does not equal lower usage. In this case, it sort of works, since the target user is someone who probably is looking for a basic iPhone that just works, and budget is already the driving force behind this purchasing decision. The iPhone SE still has a single 12 megapixel camera and a 7 megapixel front facing camera. Apple banks on the computational grace behind the A15 Bionic chip to take it to 2022. Once again, iPhone showing you what an iPhone can do not just with a 12 megapixel, but a single camera. Computationally, you get Smart HDR4 where multiple photos are stitched together for different individuals with different skin tones in a group photo mapped individually within the frame. Ooh, but ultra wide is missed here. You are brought back to 2017 before ultra wide became expected from every phone camera setup. We did a side by side comparison between the iPhone SE and the iPhone 13 mini. And with the examples shown here, most noticeably, there are differences in color saturations. Images are more vibrant in the SE as opposed to the slightly flatter tones in the iPhone 13 mini. You'll possibly have more flexibility for post editing in the 13 mini as it requires more data capture, and it might have been left out of the iPhone SE to manage storage capacity. Thankfully, photographic styles are available just like the ones in the latest iPhone 13s, so you'll at least be able to customize the look of your photos directly in the camera app for tone and warmth. On the plus side, video quality is very much alike and more than plenty for everyday use, with record options of 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. Cinematic mode, unfortunately, has been left out and not available in the SE. While the iPhone's low light performance has come a long way, especially with night mode bringing in good detail and vivid colors in our last review of the iPhone 13 mini, the night mode features aren't brought into the iPhone SE, so images in low light are pretty reminiscent of the iPhones of yesteryear grainy and lacking in detail. The battery life got slightly better from the last generation's SE, with Apple claiming 2 hours longer of video playback. Again, with the same small body, the size of the battery can only go so far. So you might want to switch it into low power mode permanently, switch it to dark mode, turn off 5G, and keep a charger handy on days out. It can take in wired 20 watt fast charging, taking you from 0-50% to 50 in 30 minutes. Overall, other budget phones are making stronger cases like the Pixel 5a with a great camera experience and the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G with its 120Hz refresh rate AMOLED display and quad camera setup making waves of their own. So in the end, it comes down to Apple or Android. The third generation of the iPhone SE starts from 2099 ringgit or 699 sing dollars for the 64 gigs, with storage options for 128 gigs and 256 gigs. It's a slightly more expensive entry point into the Apple ecosystem compared to the last SE, which started at 399 US dollars or 1999 ringgit back in 2020. But for a budget phone, 2099 ringgit is not chump change as well. At the time of this review, on Apple's official store, the only other small phone, the iPhone 13 mini, starts at 3,399 ringgit, which is 1,300 more or 60% more. And even the oldest phone available there, the iPhone 11, two and a half years old and powered by the A13 chip, is 300 ringgit more. So if it is only down to pure dollars and cents, the SE will make a decent budget choice for you to still be a part of the Apple ecosystem. All in all, the iPhone SE may still have a place in the market, but it is a shrinking one. The case it makes with this rendition could have been a lot better. There's a lot of reliance on just chipset performance, keeping users in the Apple ecosystem, and the comparatively smaller price tag. Big factors in itself, but in today's competitive space with Android phones making strong cases themselves, the market may already be validating that that isn't enough. With waning sales of the iPhone SE and news on the grapevine that Apple may already be scaling back on production. It's not going to be for everyone, but we will be sad if we see iPhone SEs become a thing of the past.